G'day, fellas, and welcome to the very first Nomad FFA Quick Match Casted Game. That is right, we are here. We have finally made it, and I tell you what, I'm so damn excited for it because this one is going to be an absolute banger. We've got incredibly good players that are going to be in this lobby. I'll introduce them to you because, well, there are... Well, it, it, it's a stacked lineup. What can I say? Anyway, let's get to it. So, spawning down on the south side of the map in the color teal. Playing as the Ayubids, mysterious figure is amongst us. His king roams southward. It's going to be no one on the Ayubids. Who else is next? Who have we got close by? Have a look at this. Playing in the purple. As the Order of the Dragon. It's going to be Stormkeeper. Look at that. Look at that king come through. He's found a beautiful little hunt here. Very close to his opponent. These guys are only a little bit apart from each other. Meanwhile, towards that west side of the map, currently, Town Center about 30% complete. Joan of Arc tapping away in the color green, playing as Joan of Arc. Naturally, when you've got Joan of Arc, you play as Joan of Arc. It's all of 5124, aka Corvinus. To his south, in the color blue, playing as the English. It's Buzz Blaze. And towards the middle of the map, in the color pink, our only Xbox controller player of this game. As the Japanese, it's Himi Neutron 499. To his north, in the color red, playing as the Byzantines. Berry Muffins. <laughs> I feel like I, I gotta be more dramatic introducing that. It's gonna be like... Berry Muffins. <laughs> you really, that's what a good name. That is such a good name. All right, over towards the east side, we've got two more players. The first one, he's going to be in orange, playing as the Juicy's Legacy. It's going to be Razendersnell. And finally, the, the giver of floral justice, playing in the yellow. It is Sunflower RTS on the Byzantines. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Himayama. It is a pleasure to have your company here today. We are here for the very first, the inaugural FFA Nomad Quick Match Casted Game. You would have seen that we've had plenty of casted games on the channel already. A few of them have been free-for-alls, but not all of them have been free-for-alls in the Quick Match. This is the very first one. And this is important because it means that you watching at home might, might find yourself in one of these casted games eventually. So we're going to take a little bit more of a relaxed approach here. It's not going to be anywhere near as... Uh, as you know, uh, analytical or, or uh, critiquing um, the same way that I would do for a 1v1. You know, if I'm if I'm watching two Conqueror 3 players go at each other and, and one of them forgets to put a Lumber Camp down on the wood line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it out. Here, I'm not going to fuss too much. Now, let's talk about some of our players because we're going to start building storylines early here. You may be aware that we've got um, some good players in the game. We've got Corvinus1, a.k.a. Salami, a.k.a. the Wallalog God himself. He's in this game and his immediate opponent, his closest opponent is Buzz Blaze. And you might not know who this is, but let me tell you a little bit about Buzz Blaze. Originally from a small town in New Hampshire. Uh, this, is, wait, is New Hampshire a state? No, it's probably a city. It, no, I feel like New, New Hampshire is like a, that's the voting thing, right? Like it's a swing state. I don't know if it's a state. I feel like anyway. Uh, I'll go with I'll go with that anyway. Uh, originally from a, a small town in New Hampshire, uh, you might be wondering where he gets his name from. Um, so his family they own a uh, an apiary, which is where you farm bees, and uh, and basically you know from a young age he's been around bees. So naturally he said, well I'm just going to call myself Buzz Blaze. Uh, and so there you have it. That is the the backstory for Buzz Blaze. Now it's important to note that with Buzz, uh, this guy's really good, incredibly good. Um, he actually was rank one on the ladder. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. When the game very first came out, I remember we actually, I think we casted a game with him or I, I, or I saw a game with him where he built a stone wall to his enemy's base and had longbows on top of it. And obviously it was just absolute absurdity. I, I, actually, I don't think we casted it. I just remember watching it and thinking, what the hell is this? I think it might've even been a tournament game, actually. I don't think it could have been a tournament game. But anyway, that, that's what we're expecting to see over on this west side. Big action. Meanwhile, towards the middle of the map, I'm going to be keeping an eye out on Kimi Neutron, of course, Jimmy Neutron's cousin. This guy, he is limited by his controller, but do not fear. Just because he has a controller doesn't mean he lacks the APM or the brain cells to be victorious here today. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what he's got here on the Japanese. A great little pocket position here. Meanwhile, towards the south side, we've got ourselves quite a vicious fight that's beginning to break out between Stormkeeper. Good friends with Stormtrooper, but slightly different guy. 
and no one. Our mysterious shrouded figure who just sits in the shadows to the south and hopes that no one spots him. Unfortunately, Stormkeeper knows well and truly all about him. The gold currently in control of Stormkeeper. Leaves a little bit to be desired here for no one. He does have gold in his vicinity, but of course, one of the things that we know is that, uh, unfortunately, you don't always spot that out when it comes to FFA Nomad. It can be very difficult early on because, well, you don't really know exactly what direction to scout in. He's made the right call in that he's come down here towards the south side of the map, away from everybody else. The only problem is that Stormkeeper definitely had the same idea. Meanwhile, let's check in over on that east side. We've got two more players that are over here. Definitely going to be making waves. Uh, it looks like... Is that a... I don't know if that's a gold or a conqueror uh, monument in the middle of the town center, but I'm sure Razen Snell... I, I, I don't even know what kind of backstory we could say about uh, Razen Snell. Definitely, I, I'm going to think from like a Forviet... A, a Forviet... A former Soviet uh, USSR uh, country. That That's definitely got to be the case with... What am I thinking of? Um, who, Who's the guy? He had a really big willy. Uh, Rasputin? Maybe that's the guy. That I, I don't know. That, that's the kind of name I'm getting. Well, Rapunzel. Oh, it's kind of close to Rapunzel. Oh, we got to go with Rapunzel. You know, this guy's letting down his head to, today. He's gonna see exactly who he can uh, who he can whip with it. Maybe maybe use it as a bit of a uh, what's a lasso. That's what I, I picture it, envision it in. Sunflower, though, definitely our arbiter of floral justice. That's gonna be something that I draw attention to. Uh, this guy, you know, just similarly to what we saw with Buzz Blaze and his backstory that he comes from an apiary over on the other side, we do have uh, Sunflower who comes from a, uh, comes from an orchard. Um, and uh, yeah, family owned orchard business, big fan of Sunflowers ever since he was a young age. Uh, you know, he, he was always striving to reach those, those top, tippity tops. And uh, I guess the, the, the reality is he's at his peak and he's not even at the top yet. I think that's, is that Post Malone quote? Probably is. Uh, Nice, nice little positioning here with the uh, the forges. <laughs> I said I wouldn't do it, but hey, come on, he's a drongo. He's a controller player. All right, you got it. You got to let him go with it. And now you got to remember, okay? This is something. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Early on in this game, and immediately have a look at this. Seven minutes through, and we've got Salami, aka Corvinus, aka All of Five One Two Four, who snipes out the villager. He says there will be no gold for anybody. This is my gold vein. This is no one else. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why Joan of Arc actually gets that. I wouldn't say it's a nerf, but sh she doesn't start with the same amount of villagers as everybody else does. And th this is largely why. It's because she can be very oppressive. Uh, in the early game, you guys would have seen the game that I played uh, recently. My first FFA Nomad quick match game. That's a, ho that's a mouthful, isn't it? FFA quick match Nomad. I don't even know how to call it. Maybe we just say like my first FFA game, you know, because that's what it is at the end of the day. Oh my God, look at that. The triple, well, double, but there was one before. So I called it a triple. Towards that south side, though, we do have the arrow slits coming through now for Stormkeeper. He's going to be keeping down his opponent. Now, just remember that no one still doesn't have his House of Wisdom up at this stage. So there is a chance that he just stays in the Dark Age the entire time. Going to be looking to pull a GUA here. We're going to ride on board with Sunflower for a little bit as the Zhukunu are already out. Have a look at this. Rapunzel is going to be trying to take out some sheep here. I, I, I apologize for calling him Rapunzel, but it, it, Ra 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 Snell. it's... Uh, it, it's, it's a fair bit. It's it's difficult for me to understand. Look at the aggression that's already coming out here. Imagine being on the defensive here. He has gone into the javelin flowers. Uh, flowers. Javelin flowers? Javelin throwers? A little bit of a javelin flowers. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of the two. All right, so locking down the uh, the gold mine still over here towards that west side. Uh, if I had to give an advantage to who... Or if, I, if I had to choose... Okay, who is going to be the guy that wins this game? It has got to be this guy up here. He is not, uh, he's not a resident of Hell's Kitchen, but he's definitely looking to bring other people into that, into that environment. That is for sure. He's got the one TC down for the moment. We do see the Grand Winery coming up. I think he might be going towards Castle Age, which is a really smart move, especially because he's found himself quite a bit of space. Have a look at this. How, how nice is this when you're playing Nomad and you look on the minimap and there's just the closest guy is over here. Like, th this is the closest guy. That, uh, that feels very good. A lot of space to work with for Berry Muffins. So, I'd be very excited about the prospect of that game, or of this game, rather. But, uh, Buzz Blaze now going to be looking to respond here up against Corvinus 1. Meanwhile, we do see Blacksmith is coming down. Now, it's important to remember that when you're playing your free-for-all games, you really want to avoid getting into a long, drawn-out battle. If you're going to take somebody out, you want to take, take them out swiftly. You want to take them out very, very quickly uh, and try and avoid getting into a, a drawn-out fight because if that happens, what you're going to see is players like Berry Muffins in the north 
Look to build up maybe some Castle Age units, maybe get some Knights or Lancers out or Cataphracts in this case because he's playing the Byzantines. He'll look to get them out and then he will just come in for the cleanup. So you've got to be very careful of that. But have a look at this. Joan of Arc gets the, the heal off early. Manages to keep that Royal Knight alive on 11 health. Very well done there. That was a pretty clutch use of Divine Restoration. So well played. We hear the scout going down over the other side. Keep in mind that uh, this is quite exposed to those longbows. So you have to be very careful with how you play. But in the middle of the map, it looks like our controller player is here. That is right. We do have Himi Neutron in the middle of the map who has managed to age up. It looks like towards the top side, he's going to scout out what his, uh, what his nearest opponent... I say his nearest opponent. It's the nearest opponent that he knows about because he doesn't actually know about this. I mean, technically, he, sh he could know about that mining camp, uh, but uh, he only really knows 100% uh, this direction right here that his opponent is looming. So I'm curious to see exactly which way he goes, but it uh, looks like we may already have our answer. Eight Samurais in the queue with the Katana Benaman going to be leading the way. Definitely the right call to action. Kimi Neutron, we're going to be watching out for him as he looks to reinvent war. That, that's that's probably the best I could go for. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a Jimmy Neutron reference. I, I used to watch Jimmy Neutron as a kid. Jimmy Neutron. That, that was like the voice of Blippi. My, my son watches Blippi. <laughs> He's like, Jimmy Neutron! I, I don't know if there's any dads that are watching and you guys have got Blippi that's going on in the house, but I tell you what, man. That guy... That guy is a hoot. He is a hoot, that is for sure. Anyway, we, we got ourselves a little bit of a push going on, on, on over here. On over here. Uh, plus one ranged armor is through on these Royal Knights. And once again, going to make it away with eight health on this bad boy. This guy looks like he might be trapped. And Joan, you've got to be careful not to get yourself picked off. And she's going to get snapped out of this game. Now, keep in mind, she will be able to buy, buy back. And there she is, just like the zombie that you expect. She comes back and she is thriving. Now, remember that not only do you have access to chivalry, which is going to heal you out of combat, but you've also got access to divine restoration. So when these knights get back and they just chill out over here, uh, they're going to be able to heal up through chivalry if, if the research comes in. But also, they're going to be able... Oh, we've, we've got an age up coming through. No one's finally aged up. He's joined the rest of the world in the feudal age at the 12-minute mark. He's got multiple men at arms in his base. So have a look at this. And they're the big boys. They're the gilded type. Now, keep in mind that king is safely inside the TC. But uh, the men at arms are just having a lovely a field day down here. No mine work, but no need, realistically. We've got the blacksmith. That's going to do all of the heavy lifting here. Plus one ranged armor uh, is, uh, is definitely difficult to deal with here. Uh, now, where, well, how does uh, Stormkeeper, sorry, not Stormkeeper, how does uh, no one deal with this? I'll be honest, I don't know, man. This is kind of a tough spot, right? The fact that you were denied gold early on really hurts. And he's managed to find new gold, but obviously hasn't gotten gotten through unharassed. Meanwhile, the, the push continues to come to shove as the second town center is now going to be coming up on the backside here for Corvinus. I, I, I probably should just call him Orlov, but uh, to me... Or, or you got to remember the thing about Corvinus or Salami is he changes his name every, every single like day. And sometimes, like I've got him on my friends list, but I purge my friend list occasionally because I, I get a lot of people that add me. And I, realistically, I just want to keep it to people that I cast. That way, you know, it, it makes it a little bit easier of a work environment for me because I can just kind of look through my friends list and be like, oh, okay, you know, Corvinus is here. Let, let's cast one of his games and just click on his name. Um, so I, I do like to do that, but then he, he sometimes changes his name so much. So I'm like, who is this person? And then I just, <laughs> whoops, sorry, buddy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, at, at this stage of the game, things are not looking good for him. The longbow numbers are really starting to build up. And remember that not only is he at, at the risk of being eliminated here, keep in mind that the king is technically, or, or the monarch is inside. I'm, I'm probably just going to start calling it the king. I apologize um, to anybody who gets uh, disappointed, upset, offended, all that good stuff that happens in 2023. But yeah, it's it, for me, it's just uh, it's it's the, the king it's the king um but <laughs> anyway um so yeah not only is he facing the potential threat of elimination right here but he, remember every second he's stuck in this fight he's being dragged down by buzz because un unless buzz can finish him off quickly and then move on to the next person or you know think about his own economy then this is, just becomes a little 1v1 over this side of the map and meanwhile you've got people like berry muffins who is just building up units ready to go in the north have a look at this got the double mercenary house out makes me a little bit a little less worried about this uh, isolation for him but uh still we are we're, we're very cognizant of of players like this who just are, are chilling now can we speak a little bit about Himi neutron in the middle of the map here our only controller player he's looking pretty solid here he's got the fishing economy that's going not the most fishing boats that we've ever seen one of the things to note is in the middle of himayama you do have these shoreline fish but there's no deep sea fish so there's not a huge incentive to actually be in the middle other than being close to all the relics i think that's probably about the best thing 
And I suspect we may actually see Order of the Dragon and Holy Roman Empire players look to try and take the middle in a lot of free-for-all nomad games. Just mainly because you do have that proximity to the relics, and it means when you do get Castle Age, you can just yoink them all up. Like, imagine if you've got your, your monastery right here. You've got one, two, three relics four relics five relics and that, that's just within like a screen or two's distance then you can look at the the ones on the extra or on the outskirts of the map keep in mind that you're going to have pretty decent coverage there as well because you're in the middle and uh, and things start to look up for you meanwhile towards that north side town center has got that concentrate on the top of it it's going to mean those villages cost slightly less keep in mind the king is still alive Looks like Buzz might be thinking about moving into Siege Engineering shortly. He does have plus one ranged attack going to be coming through here. Meanwhile, over on that east side, we do have more action. For the moment, though, no one has held on. There is a single man at arms inside the base. He's got farms coming up absolutely everywhere. He's had a little bit of a difficult time finding sources of food. Uh, but uh, we do see that he's still got access to that gold. So he'll be happy with that. I've just realized, where's my music at? Is it just me or is there no music? I'm, I'm kind of tempted right now to put music on. Because it feels like there's no music. I swear we had music earlier, but now... Is it is it just gone? It could just be gone. Second Town Center now going to be coming down in the middle of the map. Himi Neutron definitely going to be my dark horse for this game. Himi Neutron, I've got my money on you. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention earlier is there's quite a bit of banter in the community between the Xbox players and the PC players. I don't know if you guys spend much time on Reddit. I'd encourage you not to, uh, but uh, I do, unfortunately. It's one of those, you know, it's, it, when it comes to my addictions, it's like I've got, I've got three addictions. Number one, Red Bull. Number two, Age of Vampires. And number three, Reddit. And, um, you know, you, you'd, I, I've tried to minimize my usage. Like, I put my phone in black and white, but... I don't know. I just kind of find, found myself going back there. Anyway, there's uh, there's always big discussions on Reddit about, like, with Xbox players. They're like, ah, I could take these Conqueror 3 PC players out easily. And uh, I saw that there was... I think there was one guy he actually posted on Reddit recently, and he was like, oh, man, I absolutely whooped the whooped those uh, PC players' butts. <laughs> I was like, this is this is so cool. I, lo I love this rivalry. But you got to remember, at the end of the day, you know, even if I smack, uh, if I talk smack about con console players or Xbox players, just remember, at the end of the day, we're all brothers. And we're, we're just having fun. We're just we're just having a laugh over here, a bit of a goof, a bit of a gaff, that sort of stuff. So, d don't get don't get too hung up on it. Let's check in over on that east side, and we can see Sunflower is building up quite the economy behind this. A lot of olive groves beginning to come up for him. This is going to be boosting that economy up quite a bit. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to two TCs, we've only got two players in the game with those secondary TCs. That's, of course, going to be over on the west side here uh, with uh, Corvinus, who's got that second TC nice and safe uh, in that back spot. And then over towards the middle of the map, we've got the second TC coming up for Hemi Neutron. So not a huge focus on the economy at this stage, but there it is. The king is going to be able to get out the back side slowly but steadily walking away has already used that sprint ability and it looks like Corvinus might just be giving up this position and Buzz Blaze says you know what we're not even going to need to really fight this how about I just take all of this gold and you just go on your merry way now remember that there are landmark victories in this game if you lose your landmarks you will lose the game so you need to be really careful of that and Corvinus does the right thing in throwing down this guild hall in the back corner this is going to keep him safe for a little bit longer and it means that if he loses the town center if he loses the school of cavalry that he's going to be able to stay alive because of the guild hall now keep in mind once you do get to the castle age one of the things that you will be able to do uh, if we take a look you oh i, I couldn't click it in time uh but you, you can see that he he can see on his minimap all the town centers this is because he's used the king's special ability uh which is called uh treason it's a free ability you can use it uh, once you reach the castle age and then it's going to cool down, I think of about a minute. Um, and that's exactly what he looks to utilize here in this situation. Now now that uh, he's gone up to the castle age, he's managed to pick up the veterancy on his royal knights. No veterancy has come through just yet on these uh, on these archers, but this is do or die right now for Corvinus. Keep in mind, these two players are both Conqueror 3 easily. I would be calling them Conqueror 3 plus plus plus. Joan's going to get taken out. Might have the option to bring her back on that top side. Meanwhile, the knights doing a, a really good job of drawing out the spears. And I think Buzz realizes, you know what? I don't have enough tempo here to take out these Royal Knights. They've got their veterancy upgrade. He's going to try and throw down the palings. Uh, not going to be able to do it. You can see he's, he's trying his best to get the animation cancel off on it. But unfortunately, the Royal Knight number is way too strong here. And with that, it's going to mean that Salami stays alive a little bit longer in this game up against Buzz. Meanwhile, over on that east side of the map, the horsemen for Sunflower continue to look to spread that floral justice. And oh my lord, I apologize down towards that south side. We've missed it. A king was outside of the, of the, you know, it, hey, it wouldn't be a free-for-all cast without us missing the very first king. Like literally the, the inaugural king snipe. 
It's going to be Stormkeeper who manages on the Order of the Dragon to snipe out his immediate neighbor, the, the uh, Ayubid player. Unfortunately, no one witnessed it, myself included. It was a pleasure, no one. Good luck with your future endeavors, my friend. Now, we continue moving through this game as all of a sudden Orlov looks to turn the tides upon Buzz. He says, hey, Buzz, how you doing there? I saw you've put down a second TC in my base. I see you've stolen my base. How's that going for you? As the Royal Knights rampage through, the village account is going to start to dwindle here for Buzz as he runs out of places to put these villagers. You can see he's still got a little bit of space in outposts towards that top side. He was actually throwing down outposts as the, as the enemy came through. But have a look at this. We got ourselves a little bit of a double team. Oh, helping out from the south side. And this is part of where I wish we had chat for the game. I wish we were able to see, you know, right up here, just a little bit of the uh, of chat, what was happening. Because I would love to see right now that Storm, what Stormkeeper is saying uh, in the chat. Like, hey, Buzz, where's that king at? Hey, Buzz, how's your king, how's your king going? Where's the bees at, Buzz? Well, I'm not talking about the light years. I'm talking about the ones that, uh, that make the honey. And there it is, baby. 50 points. 50 population going over to Storm Keeper. He manages to take out two players very, very quickly in this game and immediately puts himself in the front running position. Keep in mind, he is down here on the south side. He's playing an S tier civilization, that being the Order of the Dragon, one of the best civilizations when it comes to free for all, in my opinion, at this early stage of the game. But you've got to remember that what Stormkeeper has done is not only has he secured himself an extra 50 population, but he has now given space to Orlov. Orlov now sits on the west corner of this map, uncontested. Nobody looking at him. No one smelling at him. The only person who knew what he was up to was Buzz Blaze. He walked around the outside of the apiary and said, hmm, I think there's a fox in the in the beehive. Somebody call Jason. <laughs> call Jason, staffed him immediately. Oh Lord, Stormkeeper's bitten off a little bit more than he can chew as Al. And can I, can I just say right now that the best civilization, if you're playing Xbox, if you're playing on controller, it is the Japanese by far. Play the Japanese every single game. And there we go. We are once again going to see the Kings located in all of their respective town centers. You can spot out where everybody is. Obviously, he knew where Teal was or from that previous thing, but that, that is going to be that treason ability that is getting used right there in, in from the King. You have to pop him out of the town center to use it, uh, but it'll give you a bit of an insight to where everybody is. Uh, a little bit of a unfortunately running out of wood here, but let's ride back on board as we do have a bit of a chase happening. Samurai up against the Gilded Men at Arms. So I think if you're going to be playing on Xbox that the tier list would probably change around a little bit. You would mainly want to focus on civilizations that have access to really good, um, like, Protoss armies, basically. Armies that you can just A move with, attack move. And the Japanese is by far the best one because you just just get Samurai and then just th that's pretty much it. No nothing else, really. Samurai, get your Odachi upgrade. And we can see that Yimmy Neutron is looking pretty decent here. He's got a beautiful base beginning to build here. I love all the compactness of the houses in the center of the map. He's looking very strong. The men at arms are trying to find their way through, but unfortunately, it looks like Stormkeeper may have thrown all of these, uh, all of these men at arms away. But have a look at this. It looks like Yimmy Neutron is just going to allow him to, to keep on living his best life. Shinto Priest, now going to be picking up some relics. Apologies, I don't know why it moved over that way. So majority of the Reddit relics are now being picked up as well. We can see those two to the south have been picked up. I'm suspecting it might have been by Stormkeeper himself, and indeed it was. And now the scout is out. So now that we've gotten to this point, who is next on the chopping block? And I can't help but feel like it's got to be one of these two. Rapunzel or Sunflower, it's got to be one of these two. Um... It, it, I, I feel like it has to be almost certain. These guys are way too close for comfort. They've managed to find a little bit of space here, so I suspect there might have been negotiating going on, saying, you know, hey, if you kill me, or hey, if you try and fight me, we're just going to get stuck and locked in war. Like, let, let's not do it. Now we've got a little bit of a backstab happening here. As he surrenders at me! <laughs> It's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. He just surrenders immediately. You know he's typing in the chat right now. Rapunzel's like, I can't believe you lied to me like this. Why would you do that? Who, who would lie on the internet? Picks up the extra 50 population right there. Sunflower begins to spread the seeds of justice as he makes his way across the map. That was that was pretty quickly uh, after what, what was happening over the other side of the map. And look at these men-at-arms making their way towards the top side. How, is he have, how does he have them running out of formation like this? Because they don't have their torches out. Like, hold on. Can I... Let's ride on board with him. Stormkeeper, where you at? There you are. 
I don't know, he's just right-clicked the town center. But why don't they have the torches? I would have thought they'd be carrying torches trying to trying to get towards that. And I, I, I really respect this grind. Like, the hustle right now from Stormkeeper is mad. The fact that he's got, like, 11 men at arms and he was just like, yeah, just go go get them, boys. That sort of thing. Like, I, I, you got to appreciate a guy who's willing to do that. But now, Orlov says, I don't appreciate you, mate, but I do thank you for the XP. Going to help me out a little bit there. So now we see that uh, Stormkeeper's helped out Orlov quite a bit this game. Not only has he taken out by far the biggest threat, but he's also just handed him over a huge amount of experience. We can actually check and see what the experience levels are here for JD. She's about 20% through that first or through, uh, through that third level now. So not going to be long until she's level four. And once level four arrives, that's when you really need to be scared of Jean d'Arc because that buffs up all of your units. And I'd love to see Arbor Trier coming out. And that's what we do. Looks like we've already got that melee armor that, that has come in. So Gam I think it's Gambison's. The Gambison's upgrade has been researched. And now, who's next? That's the big question that Sunflower is going to be asking as he moves across the map. Now, keep in mind, there were a lot of samurai here, and he's got a huge amount of samurai. Have a look. Have, have, is this just 100% samurai that we are witnessing right now? It is. Look at this. 59 samurai. I tell you what. The haters are going to hate on the Xbox controllers, or on, on the Xbox players. But, yo, watch out. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen, because... This guy knows what he's doing. We can say that much for certain. He knows 100% what is going to happen this game. He's going to make samurais, and he's going to laugh at his opponent. He's going to absolutely obliterate through this army as well. Only javelins, archers, and horsemen. Like, this is not even going to be close. I reckon he could probably take him out with just these samurai right here. Uh, he's going to he's gonna hold the line. You can see the javelin throw is actually doing some decent work here. They're kind of like pseudo crossbows. Um, probably probably not when you think about that. These guys have got six armor versus 11 attack. They're only doing five damage compared to a crossbow that's probably doing, what, closer to... Uh, yeah, closer to 22 damage minus the armor. So uh, probably about between double and triple the damage. So definitely not your pseudo crossbow as much as I had hoped. Meanwhile, more and more units starting to come in. You got to be careful right now, Sunflower. I feel like you are picking a fight with a man who has got a lot of samurai and that's never a good thing to do. And you got to remember that we, we've got... I, I want to actually make a law for this, okay? Because you've got Lanchester's Law or Lanchester's Square, which works for ranged units. And it basically says the larger the army is, the faster it can dispatch of an enemy army. So if you've got two players that are fighting with even armies... They're going to take each other out in, say, a minute. Whereas if you've got one that's got double the size of the army of the opponent, you would think, okay, well, he's going to take the opponent out in 30 seconds. But that's not the case. Uh, it, it would be, it would probably be faster than that, and it would be with a lot less losses because of that. Um, and I, I think because of that, um, that, that, that's a pretty interesting concept. But I think there's also another one that, that should be very relevant, and that is the, the law of... What, what's the opposite of diminishing? Because I feel like when it comes to diminishing returns... It exists on crossbows and hand cannoneers for these big fights, uh, whereas the opposite happens for samurais. They get stronger the more of them that, that there are because you just can't micro against them. It's like, how do you micro against 400 samurai running at you and the, the console player is just laughing. He's like, yeah, I've, I've got my auto-queued villagers on. I'm having a wonderful time. I've got plenty of barracks. I'm just spamming out. Like, he's, he's living his best life over here. And what can you do to stop that other than just like mass mangonels and stone walls? But I'll be honest, I, I don't actually know what to do against it. Like, wh what do you do against 300 samurai that have all got their Odachi upgrade, that have all got... I mean, we, we do see that the elite uh, upgrades should be coming through shortly here. They're, they're not quite yet, but uh, hopefully they will soon. Decent sized army now. We do see crossbows are being added. Varangian guards are also in. Going to be able to pick off that better man. Will immediately look to try and start the fight. Keep in mind, he's got reinforcements on the back side as well. And slowly and steadily, those samurais get us around to the top side. The reinforcements are here. And now Sunflower looks like he may have bitten off more than he can chew once again. As uh, Himi Neutron has decided, you know what? I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be going east here. Normally the Japanese go west. But in this case, they're going to be going east. It's a bit of an ocean out that way, over towards the east, as you can see. But uh, he doesn't mind at all. <laughs> Look at the cleanup coming through now. He's got 10,000 gold in the bank. He can afford any upgrade he likes. The question's just whether he actually likes it. And we got ourselves a little bit of a little bit of a conga line happening right here. Not not something that you want to be doing with, with your samurai. Samurai aren't known for their conga ability. Uh, but even though we do see that effective conga line coming out to strike fear into the opponent, um, we don't actually see too much of a response coming out from Sunflower. And Sunflower, unfortunately, looks like he will lose out against this army. And keep in mind, he doesn't even have the elite upgrades yet that he probably should. Uh, Sunflower has gone to Imperial Age as well. And there's the elite upgrades now coming through. He's remembered. He said, oh, that's right. I'm, I'm Castle. I'm Imperial Age, rather. Uh, I'm just going to get all of my relevant technologies. And goes through, does that. So very well done right there. 
Nesta B is going to get caught out of position. All Sacred Sites currently held. Have a look at this. Himi Neutron, definitely my favorite coming into this game. Uh, just simply because he is the controller player. And uh, now we've got Elite Varangian Guards coming out on the side of Sunflower. A little bit more melee armor for this unit, but definitely compared to the Samurai, there's no real, there's no huge threat here. Meanwhile, have a look at this. Over towards that west side, we have got plenty of space that is built for the uh, for our our uh, JD player. Samurai is still here. Crossbows yet to receive their elite upgrades from Sunflower, but the Varangian Guard are holding at the front. No elite army tactics through just yet. Over on the other side, it looks like we've got elite mounted Samurai coming through. Oda Tactics is not through either for the Japanese player, but he does manage to hold over on the east side of the map. There's quite a few villagers that are out here as well. Now, keep in mind, Stormkeeper, he's got a lot of population in the back pocket. Let's take a look and see exactly how much he's working with. He's at 140 at the moment, but if I remember correctly, he's taken out one player, Buzz, and then he's taken out a second player, no one. The third player of the game was obviously taken out over on this east side. That was Rapunzel, who was taken out, and that extra population was secured by Sunflower. So at the moment, even though... Uh, we've got, you know, quite a bit of uh, of isolation down on the bottom and that extra population. I feel like Stormkeeper's really not putting the pedal to the metal just yet. Let's check in with Orlov and see how he's doing. He's maxed out on his population. So he's 196. He's going to be filling up that last final slot or those last final slots with villagers. Definitely the right call to be doing uh, when you're at this stage of the game. Has managed to rebuild his landmarks as well and now sits in a pretty comfortable spot over towards that west side. The main issue that he's going to have, he doesn't have that extra population. So he's going to need to go on the hunt if he wants it. Now, keep in mind towards the north, no extra population here for Barry. No pop no extra population here for uh, for Himi Neutron just yet. And only that 50 for Sunflower. So definitely our two favorites as the game goes longer is going to be on the south sides. But I'm going to be curious to see whether anybody else can overcome this. When I think about the UI and the, the way that it currently sits, and this is me changing the subject because I, I probably didn't caveat that, that or didn't uh, br bring blend that in very well. I should have said something like, let's just talk a little bit briefly about the UI. One of the things that I would love to see, and I know that this is me, like, this is me begging to developers that, that aren't really listening to me. Um, I, I'd love to see, like, a, a, an actual count on, on the, on, like, how many kills that they've gotten. You see the kings being exposed once again here by Corvinus on the minimap. But I'd, I'd love to be able to see that king, that uh, that kill count, or that that population count, or some way in the game where you can know how many kills your opponent has got. Maybe there, maybe there's a way to see it if you're playing it. Now that I think about it, th there might be. I'd have to double check on on that. But uh, yeah, like for for when we're casting though, that would be really really nice to see because uh, that, that's pretty important information. Anyway, now pushing forward, Sunflower. Has picked up the elite upgrade. So elite crossbows here. Elite Varangian guards and nest of bees. And I do like the fact that he's gone into the nest of bees here. Uh, he's looked to pick up. He's gone for... Where is that, that landmark? It's probably at the back. There it is. The foreign engineering company. Keep in mind, he does actually have that extra 50 population he can go into. How many houses has he got down here? Because we've got 11 houses. 12 houses. Wait, can I see? He's got 25 houses. Oh no, he does have the extra population. What am I? What am I doing? What am I thinking? He does have it. Why did I think that he couldn't? Was I looking at somebody else? Maybe I was looking at somebody else. Anyway, we, we, have a look at this. Reboldequins on the backside. Nest of bees as well. And once again, these two are going at it. Reboldequins beginning to move forward, looking to clean out that front line so the samurais can get through to the back. A couple of junks going to be helping out here as well. But meanwhile, have a look at this. The nest of bees trying their best to take out the Reboldequins before they can even get some damage in. Not going to be happening. Keep's going to be thrown down as well. And Himi Neutron, where is that army? Hopefully it starts making its way over towards the top side where it is needed. You can see the rally points currently going to the south side of the base. He's going to try his best to uh, to take out the army with the forces that he's got here. More villagers are getting pulled though. The keep is going to be coming online. Nesta B staying alive and the crossbows together with the Varangian guards are going to be able to hold for the moment and Sunflower begins to approach his final form making his way to the center of the map. Keep in mind, we do have a king sitting inside the Shogunate Castle. 13,000 health on that bad boy. Good luck to you. That's a, that's a lot of health to get through. And now those Reboldequins will get taken out. Meanwhile, towards the south, villagers continue to gather. Castle here, safely. Second castle over towards this western side of the base. Let's check in towards Corvinus. A huge farming economy. 
A lot of gold in the bank. 6,800 ready to go. And there's the Red Palace. He's thrown the king in. We'll put the king out for a little bit. I'm not sure what the plan is. I think he's always oh, just revealed where are the king's at. And you can see from his perspective, he just gets a bit of an idea on the health of the town centers as well. So, okay, I know that no one's really under any attack, any threat. Because one of the big things that you want to be looking to do in these games is king snipe. This is a really important strategy and something that when it happens against you, it is so infuriating, man. I've worked so hard to take this player out. And now somebody else has come in at the last second and they've killed the king. And it means that now they get the population. Now they can leverage that extra population for a larger economy, for a larger military, and we know how important that is. So it can be really painful when that happens, but it looks like, it sounds like, I think we may have had a delete that's come through. Just judging by the fact we do have quite a few population spaces that are open, and I can't see any Arbletria out. I can't see any archers out at the moment. So it could be a horseman... A, a horseman-royal knight combo, and that's exactly what it's going to be. I think that all of might be thinking about going for a little bit of a snipe and have a look at this berry muffins coming out of the kitchen gonna be looking to put a little bit more than berries in the muffins today by the looks of it meanwhile towards that uh, that east corner sunflower continues to hold castle standing strong look at the japanese defense we got to get a picture of this i am sorry but look at this defense you are not going to be taking down this king easily this is absolutely insane we might need to have to wait we might need to wait for that king to actually or for that keep to actually come up because i tell you what that's going to be a pretty awesome screenshot when it does meanwhile towards that top side corvinus one says actually berry muffins i know that you've been enjoying yourself this game um you've been having fun towards this north side nobody's even looked in your direction but i've heard that there's a king around here where is that king and we can see one of the big mistakes that's going to be made now and what that is is when it comes to ffa nomad you want to make sure that your king is behind stone walls. So take a look at what Corvinus has got over here. You see how he's got this completely surrounded by stone walls. What this means is that you're not going to be able... Oh, the king's on the ground! The king is on the ground! Moving forward towards his army is trying his best to make sure it stays alive, but the king doesn't have a lot of health. And with that, the game, unfortunately for Barry Muffins, goes the wrong way. Me wow. Okay. All right. Barry Muffins. He loses all of, all of his... Uh all of his game in, in a heartbeat right there. That is crazy. Uh, it looks like the the, uh, the the keeps are starting to come down or the castles are starting to go down. Um, but yeah, just to finish off what I was talking about. So the reason why we want to always put our king inside a keep and put it behind a stone wall is so that the stone walls, they can only be, uh, they can only be taken out by siege, right? Like you need battering rams up here. You need uh, bombards. You need trebuchets. You need something to take this out that goes boom. You can't actually do it with horsemen. And because of that, it means that you're not exposed to this kind of strategy where Corvinus runs in, snipes the town center, the king comes, jumps out, and unfortunately, that's that's you know that that's the end of it. Um, so, hopefully, Barry Muffins in the next game that we see him will remember that and will look to just all, all you need to do is just throw a keep down up here and then put a stone wall around it like that, and that's going to make you safe from a lot of those snipe attempts. So now that Corvinus has managed to take out an enemy king. That means he's got an extra 50 population to play with. Now, keep in mind, he owes his survival right now to the purple player in the south, Stormkeeper. The purple player in the south managed to take out Buzz Blaze when he wasn't looking. Got a little bit of the double team, which can happen. It happens in FFA. It happens all the time. It, it might not always be intentional. It might not always be nefarious, but it does happen. Now, the Samurai, together with the Reboldequin, going to be moving forward here. Keep in mind, no Elite Oda tactics just yet from Himi Neutron. We've got the the firing of the uh, of of the uh, forts on the backside. Meanwhile, there's actually a little bit more of a raid coming through. I suspect Corvinus might be looking to target down Sunflower on the next strike. Now, keep in mind that's also going to mean that Jimmy Neutron, aka Himmy Neutron, uh, is let's, let's get a picture of this. This is just this is the, this is the stuff of legends right now. As as the units begin to come in from that top right hand corner. I love it. I absolutely love it. Really beautiful base building coming in from our Xbox player here today. I'm I'm in awe of, of how well this base is built for a man that hasn't dropped a single stone wall. And he's going to surrender! No, don't be surrendering like this! Oh, I can't believe it. And see, this is one of those things where you have to try and fight on to the end. Because guess what? Just e even seconds away from this. Look at this. All of the horsemen are coming down. There's no stone wall that's up yet. If he had held on for just a minute longer... 
things would have been different. All of these castles would have been firing down at the at the backside here. You can just pop the king out down here and then move him over to this shogunate castle. Then you can pop him out and move him over to this castle, then move him into this castle. You got plenty of time that you can play with here. And unfortunately, Himi Neutron throws in the towel right when he needed a hero and right when a hero was coming to save him. Ladies and gentlemen, Corvinus 1, aka Orlov, begins to march towards the base of Sunflower. Keep in mind that king is going to get exposed. We can see it on the minimap once again. He knows exactly where it is. The king It's a fish out of water, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't know where to go. And unfortunately, not stonewalled in. Not in a keep. There's not even a keep in the backside. And unfortunately, you know what that means? That means that that king is going to get caught out of position. Tries to get back in the town center. He manages to find it. The problem is there's so many horsemen here that unfortunately for Sunflower RTS, he is going to have no chance today other, th other than to go back into the dirt in which he has come from. And down she goes. All of the villagers taken out. All of the military taken out. And that's another thing to note. I just realized that now. One of the things that you could do in Outback Oct... Oh my lord, there's a... Oh, there's a... Oh gosh. Oh! <laughs> wow, what a twist to this game. Stormkeeper up against all of right now. He knows where the king is, and you can just see more stone walls coming through. The king's going to make a bit of a run for it, heading towards that top side. He knows he needs to escape. Meanwhile, the Gilded Knights are making their way forward. He needs to take these walls down immediately so he can make his way up towards this position. He also needs to send a subsequent force around to get to, to do the uh, intercept because there is inevitably going to be a king that makes it to the other side of the wall here. Where is the king? Where is the king? He's a slow mover. He's a slow mover. Oh, the, he didn't run the Gilded Knights through Stormkeeper. Had a chance this game. He really did have a chance to tank down the king just then. But unfortunately, it's not going to happen. You can see that the king, he's a slow mover, but he's making his way north. Now, he's still hyper fixated. Hyper fixated? I guess, I guess fixated. Probably hyper fixated a little bit superfluous there. Oh, remember? Oh, there's landmarks in play. Oh, we can just take the landmarks out. Meanwhile, towards the south side, Corvinus can't get through. The stone walls are going to be blocking any attempt here. He's got a full 100% wall on this south side, guaranteed to keep himself safe against any of those potential raids. And you can see this is not Stormkeeper's first rodeo, my friends. He used to be a Stormtrooper, now he's a Stormkeeper. And the landmarks start to go down. Gold inside the guild hall. It's just a cool 11,000. He pops all the gold. He says, okay, now we need that gold. Alien technology comes out here. He needs to focus down these landmarks. It, it, it seems so simple. Landmark, 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 landmark. That's it. You take them all out. That's it. You don't even have to worry about the king. The monarch is irrelevant in this game if you take out those landmarks. But it looks like he's not going to be paying attention. Stormkeeper going to be running some gilded knights out of the base because... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You've got stone walls, bro. You're fine down here. You do need to worry about Joan level four, though. When Joan level four comes out, you're going to have trouble because then that cannon in play, or that cannon is going to come out for free. But until Joan's level four, you don't have to really worry about that. Bombards will go down. Hand cannon is cleaned up. Arbolatria numbers here as well. We definitely could have seen a king, well, not a king snipe, but a landmark snipe here. But Stormkeeper, unfortunately, fumbling the ball right at the end of the line here. So how is he going to find a way back into this game? That's the question for me. He's managed to build up some pretty decent trade over here. 91 gold per minute, or 91 gold per trade is definitely some uh, some desirable trade. But have a look at this. 13,000 gold in the bank here at the moment for all of. This is a huge amount of gold to have in your back pocket. And now... Over on the west-hand side, we've got our final two players for the game. All of Stormkeeper. They've come a long way throughout this game. But where does it go from here? Why does... The, the, this, these Gilded Knights look so derpy when they're running like that. Is it just me? They, they kind of look a little bit derpy, right? It's, <laughs> I feel like they got their tongues hanging out of their mouth. Like, <laughs> silly. Silly Gilded Knights. Anyway, horseman numbers are pretty high at the moment. Um... This is... Why are there villagers here? So, one of the things I noticed... Okay, when... When the king was eliminated, all of the villagers died, and Corvinus got experience for the ones that were in his vicinity. All of the military also died out here as well. And the reason why I, I bring that up is because in Outback Octagon, what you used to be able to do... Well, that's, that's, that's some dead units right there. Good, good luck to them. Um, in Outback Octagon... Oh, he's going to hold the line, actually, because these guys got a lot of melee armor. Oh, they do too. Oh, th these guys might have... I'm not even kidding you. I think the Gilded Knights win this. I unironically think the Gilded Knights win this. 
I mean, he's fighting up against the Horde right now, but the Gilded Knights have got so much armor and so much health, and he's got these guys fully upgraded. Look at this. <laughs> They're actually doing it, dude. Oh, it's the 300 all over again. Look at them. <laughs> Look at this. Hand cannon is on the back, gonna help clean it up. The Order of the Dragon, you're seeing why. <laughs> Look at it. He didn't even lose a single hit. <laughs> He didn't lose. He's like, oh, he's lost a single hand getting here in the fight, dude. Oh, poor Corvinus is like, uh, ooh, mm, okay, we might need, <laughs> we're going to need to go back to the drawing board on this combination. This might be a little bit hard. Meanwhile, more reinforcements coming in. The, the, the Arbola Trio will definitely help out here. They're, they're going to do quite a bit of work. Hand cannon is, should be able to clean up the horseman pretty quickly here. But that was very funny to watch. I, I didn't even realize until halfway through that, hold on a minute. We might have ourselves a game right now. And yeah, these these Gilded Knights, these are kind of scary, right? Look at the health pool on these, 552. One of the things I would love to see, see from Stormkeeper is grabbing this Regnants down here and just pumping out Prelates with the Inspired Warrior technology. This will buff up the damage. So you can see it buffs it up by 15%, gives them armor, also gives, them, uh, gives the Prelate a little bit of movement speed as well. But it's a great combination that you can run because it also means that you're going to be able to heal up your units. This guy's on two health. Look at that. Imagine you gave him an extra 550 health. He'd be eternally grateful. Meanwhile, it looks like the stone wall, the integrity of it will be questioned right now. As Orlov begins to make his way through. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to trade, uh, while you do lose your landmarks, you don't lose your markets. So if Orlov was to find a market over this side of the map, he could be in a really good spot because he could trade to that market. We don't see it just yet. Have a look towards that top side. We have a slow and steady buildup of, uh, of forces towards this northern position. Or towards this rather western position. Here we go. So it's just, he's going to be trading to the neutral market. But I I'm looking for any kind of just normal market. And then just trade to that. But I don't, I don't think we've got one. Over on the west side, the Gilded Knights. Together with the Hand Cannoneers, make a march towards... This position, level 4, Joan is now officially online. The cannons have come out. She's got Valorious Inspiration as well. Keep that in mind. She'll be ready to pop that, the extra attack speed. Here she goes. She's standing on the back line. Hand Cannon is on top of the stone walls, picking up that extra range as well. Horseman, Gilded Horseman towards the top side. I don't know whether she's popped that attack speed yet. She needs to do it. You can see the little AoE around her. Meanwhile, look at all the cannons that are here. If, if Corvinus loses this, this is a lot of resources that are going to be going down the drain. Bombard also here to help out. Hand Cannon is working on those Arbola Trio. Randy the Revolver Quinn's on the way through. Looking to clean up the horsemen. We'll be able to find it. And the Arbola Trio are holding strong. Gilded Knights on the bottom side. Managed to make their way through with a connection onto both Joan as well as those Bombards. Revolver Quinn's lining the front. And now the, those, the, the one cannon or one Bombard goes down. It looks like they're going to have to make a little bit of a run for it here on the wall at the top side. Let's bring that UI back in. See exactly what these two are up to. Meanwhile, on the north side, more walls beginning to come up. Now, keep in mind, you're not going to be able to throw down any more wonders, or rather any more landmarks. That This is the, the landmarks that you've got are the landmarks that you have placed now. You're not playing as the Chinese, so you can't go and put a landmark in this northern corner whenever you're just feeling like it. But now, towards the middle of the map, the cleanup is coming through from Stormkeeper. He, he's, he's managed to build up a really solid army here. The fact that he's got these gilded horsemen out and he's responded very effectively to this, we can see just how effective... Joan goes down. We can see just how, how good of a player he is. Joan, go, Joan returns to the battlefield. There it is. Um, and have a look at this. Orlov is struggling to actually keep up here. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that he's actually made. He's not making villages anymore. One of the big factors for me in free-for-all is when you manage to take that extra population space off a player, you need to add in villages and you need to add in military. You, you need to split it both. You can't just be making only military because if you do, you're going to have, you're going to have, or what's going to happen is what's happening right now to Corvinus, where he can't actually support this. And let's compare it over to Stormkeeper. Stormkeeper is maxed. Stormkeeper has an economy of 144, a military of 156, and Corvinus 1 still only sits on 124. At this stage of the game, I have to put Stormkeeper as the favorite. There's no two ways about it. He is completely maxed. He's got an economy that is booming. He's got relics out the wazoo. I don't know how many relics he's got. And to be honest, I think we'd be very, we'd find it very difficult to count them just because, well, where are they all? Well, it's hard because they're in outposts, places. We know that he's got at least three. I can say that much. Whoa. 
you see that one? Uh, that was, was that a bit of the landmark? A little bit of the house? Maybe a bit of the house. I think it was the top of the house. All right, so two landmarks have now gone down. One of the things I'd love to see from Stormkeeper is getting out a huge amount of siege. And he's now going to put down forward, forward barracks down here as well. I don't know how good Stormkeeper is, but quite honestly, I, I want to just check. This guy's got to be like Conqueror. He's got to be a Conqueror player. He is very, very good. Now beginning to move forward. Randy. Randy from the top rope. Unfortunately, no, that's not from the top. Oh, he somehow manages to live through it. Reboldequin's firing off another Reboldequin towards the front. It's going to go down. But the, the Reboldequins. Oh, look at the defense coming through right now. Arbolatria on the top of the wall. They've got their shields down as well. So they're going to have a little bit of extra range together with Randy. Also, the elite knights just eat through all the horsemen, all of those spears, like absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing was there. Where did all that army go? Look at Stormgiver. He's, he's down 40 military in just in, the, in that fight. Obviously, he's replaced it as well. But we now start to see more and more units coming out across the field. He's beginning to build up. One of the things I'd love to see from him is Siege. He's playing as the Order of the Dragon. You've got access to amazing Siege units. Siege units like the uh, the Culverin. Siege units like the Mangonel. These are really important units to have in big battles like this because the more AoE you've got from the Mangonel, the better it's going to be for you. But now, Villager's going to get caught out of position as they're throwing down this keep. Doubtful that it gets up. And with that, Corvinus takes control once again on this top side. Keep in mind when it comes to the military count, 140 for Stormkeeper compared to Orlov sitting on 120. He has managed to... He did hear my call. He has started building up more villagers sitting at 147 at the moment. Now, an another thing to note, uh, we, we saw that there were some villagers. Yeah, so there are villagers here. So it looks like if you just surrender, you don't lose... Or your villagers don't die. But if, if, you, if you get eliminated, I think your villagers will die. Which means that these villagers can be technically... These can be converted by Wallalol. You come up here, Wallalol, congratulations. You've got 16 workers. That's pretty cool. Down towards the south. It looks like the wall will hold for the moment for Stormkeeper. Keep in mind that uh, he was trading along this lines, but by having that gate, he's enabled himself to have movement through here. Now, do we see if Stormkeeper was smart? And I suspect he is, because he seems like a pretty decent player. What he would do is he would wait for Corvinus to come down here and start pushing this wall. Then he would re-wall on the backside. And then he would just go kill the landmarks. Because there's four landmarks. You just, you just got to kill the four landmarks. That's it. All I'm asking is just kill four landmarks. That's it. Not that tough. And you can see he's now caught out of position. This is a really, really trap. Like, this is a significant trap right here. That Corvinus may fall in. Oh, did you see that? Look, looked like we had a repeat of the Fire Lancers there. Two, two elite elite uh, knights. Elite gilded, elite, elite gilded horsemen. No, elite gilded knights. Uh, a little bit bugged out right now. But the army is looking very formidable right now from Stormkeeper. Uh, unfortunately... It's not going to be enough here as Corvinus manages to overpower his opponent. Now, keep in mind, he does still have Joan of Arc with her inspiration ability, increasing the attack speed of all units by 35%. That is really powerful to have. I don't know whether it affects Siege, but if it does, that would kind of be crazy. And now, Stormkeeper slowly losing out position on this north side. He's been so close a couple of times, but and I really feel like if he just made a little bit more siege, he would have had this. I feel like he's had multiple chances to win this game. So if Corvinus walks away with this one, it's very much Stormkeeper's loss rather than Orlov's victory. Let's check in on that south side. He's got thrown down a market down in this east corner. Have a look at this. These are going to be some pretty crazy numbers as he is looking to trade. 144, look at that. Ideally, we'd love to see him take out these stone walls so he gets a little bit more of a bird's eye trade. Uh, just allowing him to... Well, not bird's eye trade, but uh, bird flight trade. We, we want to be traveling as the bird does when we come to, when it comes to trading in, in that straight line. We don't want to be going around things. You see, he's got a little bit of a, uh, a mobility issue at the moment where he has to go around the stone wall. We want to go through the stone wall, ideally. Battering Ram's now going to be coming up as well here in the middle of the map. All of slowly adding more and more through. He's got 1,600 gold in the bank at the moment, but still a pretty decent gold income. I don't know where it's all coming from. Oh, it's coming from trade. Oh, it's coming from trade. I didn't even realize. He's got 50 traders himself. Have a look at this. I completely forgot. 145 gold now coming through for him. A massive trading economy. Does have that extra special upgrade as well that the French and Joan of Arc get access to, which uh, increases the trader income. Every second, they get a little bit more. But now moving forward, Battering Rams, they're, they're going to try and bait out as much of the attacks as they can. Hand Cannoneers towards the top side. Royal Knights also burning through. And we get to see, we get to witness a truly even battle in this late game. 
One of the big problems that you have in FFAs is there's often a runaway player who just goes through the game, stops over everybody, and uses that extra population space to just really ram home their message. Uh, unfortunately for these two players today, that doesn't happen. Instead, they're going to have to fight it out to the death. And uh, we, are, we are seeing it happen right here in front of us. Corvinus now cleaning up once again. Still about 56 population to go in the bank. Stormkeeper, he's down to 200 out of 300. Have a look at this. No gold or only 1,200 gold in the bank. Less than 1,000 food. This is not looking good for him. This means that he's on a timer because his opponent is marching straight towards him. Let's check in. Where, where are the landmarks? One, two, three. They're all next to each other. They're all next to each other. He doesn't even have any distance between them. No, no little back of the map Swabia kind of shenanigans. Where's that king? King's down here. He could stonewall it in, but remember, it doesn't really matter. Even if you lose the landmarks, you still lose the game. So it doesn't really matter. That's why it's so important to hide these landmarks in the corners of the map, because it just means that you've got that extra little bit of time to defend, that extra little bit of space that guarantees that your base will, will stay alive a little bit longer. Numbers really looking good here for Orlov as he moves through. Numbers are building now for Stormkeeper, up to 244 population, 112 military. Compared to his opponent, who's on 162, so quite a big difference between them. We see the first Culverins coming out of the game for him. A little bit late, a little bit delayed here. Also got some Gilded Horsemen up towards that north side, trying to interrupt trade. Moving forward, though, the Reboldequin, the extra heal comes through. Joan of Arc looking to try and cement her legacy in Age of Empires 4 history as the first FFAQ ranked quick match I'm just going to say all the buzzwords at the same time uh, Victor that we may potentially have we see her go down unfortunately it's going to be a bit of a buyback situation she'll have to run back all the way beautiful micro that's coming through I'm, I'm telling you th this guy's got to be a conqueror player there's no way he, he's very very good when it comes to his micro but unfortunately when it comes to his economy things are not going as well Corvinus has managed to maintain a beautiful composition he's kept siege going throughout this game Arbolatria Royal Knight together with Randy on the backside has just meant he has had an absolute easy time steamrolling down this hill and now it's only a matter of time until those landmarks come up next Keep in mind, Stormkeeper is going to be doing his best to defend in this situation. Needs to move into, I think, a hand cannoneer spearman combo would be really nice. Together with maybe just like a couple of mangoes and culverin. I think would be the best way for him to move forward. But it's too late at this stage of the game. You, you're sitting on, you know, 300 population and pushing your enemy in. Meanwhile, he's at 161. And that's all she wrote, really. It's only a matter of time un un until he goes down. I don't think there's any real position for a snipe attempt either. When it comes to landmarks, we've got two landmarks that are down for Corvinus. Third landmark is alive. It's going to be that Red Palace. Fourth landmark, the Guild Hall is still alive. Plenty of gold in the bank, by the way. When it comes to the King, the King is safely inside the Red Palace. No real risk of it going down. It is behind stone walls, so there's no, no uh, prospect of a snipe attempt here. This is a very difficult fight right here for Stormkeeper to actually win. Um, heads up, because that's what he's doing right now. He's got to play heads up against Royal Knights. Uh, and with this much population space, it is difficult to do because they're fast units. They can reinforce very quickly. We see them marching across the map. And of course, they're only one population. These, these units are, are very, very strong. A lot of upgrades. Royal Bloodlines, of course, is on there, but they've also got things like Chivalry that are going for them. Uh, they've, got their, they've got plenty of other things. I can't, what is it? Cantled Saddles, I think, is another upgrade that they've got. They've got lots of little different unique upgrades that just make them stronger. Together with the Arbler Trio, I mean, this this is just the ultimate late game composition. And I think in my eyes, maybe John Dark deserves a little bit of a higher, uh, a little bit of a higher mark on my tier list. And I think maybe is John Dark the, oh, look at that Arbler Trio throwing down there for V Shield. Just a, just a cool casual eight armor. Still no ranged armor, by the way. Wait, does Corbinus really not have ranged armor? He's been fighting this long in the game. Where, where's the blacksmith at? Hold on. Where's the blacksmith at? I don't see a blacksmith. Oh, there they are. Wait. Why doesn't he have ranged armor? Oh, because it, oh, it's the plus. It's the plus. Oh, I'm, I'm silly. I'm sorry. I'm a bit special. You have to ignore me. I apologize. It, it's... Oh, gosh. Sometimes I wonder how this Dr Drongo guy even got Conqueror 3 sometimes. It's... <laughs> Who is this guy? Get him out of here. So, at, at this stage, it seems almost certain of an Orlov victory. He's going to be our inaugural victor here. In, in the free-for-all... Out in the in the I'm, I've got to think of some some way. How, what's the best way to say this? The quick match FFA. 
the the quick match octagon. Maybe we could go with the quick match octagon. What do you guys reckon of that? I don't I don't really want to call it octagon because o o octagon to me is always going to be outback octagon. But I'm going to have to come up with some new names for this because calling it the the Nomad FFA quick match inaugural winner it's a little bit of a mouthful it's a little bit of a mouthful but i mean at this stage of the game stormkeeper let's ride on board with him let's see what from his line of sight what's the plan traders are out to the east side he's still got line of sight across here it's pretty decent coverage there's no build up of units there's no cannon emplacements back here he's got units in queue we can see he's making units towards this north side but he's losing them to the battering ram so damn quickly it's just a matter of time until he taps out. And I, I feel like at, at this stage of the game, if he tapped out, I wouldn't even be mad. You know, when it comes to FFA, often we expect people to fight to the end. And I think that that's valiant that you do it. However, in this case where your opponent is quite literally just steam steamrolling down your base, battering ramming down your base, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? This is absolutely fine. And we, we do actually see this little cleanup crew to the north going to be taken out here. How many traders has Orlov actually got? Because I feel like he's lost a fair bit. He's still got 50 traders. I like that he, he's always managed to just replace the traders that have died. He's never gone more than 50 traders. Um, but yeah, his economy is absolutely booming at the moment. Big economy behind this. Lots of resources in the bank. No two ways about it. This is this is all over Red Rover. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, from here, I, I want to know, what do you guys want to see? You want to see more FFA casts? Because I want to give them to you. I've had a lot of fun doing this. Even though we don't have the UI, it feels really good casting these games. These games are active. They're exciting. There's plot twists. I, I, for me personally, I wish that we had the in-game chat. I just, I, I wanted to just see the rage from when Rapunzel was like, I can't believe you attacked me after everything that we've been through. And, you know, Sunflower was just, he was just spreading his floral justice. What can I say? Town Center going to go down here. Our last landmarks on the map. The Arkan, the Regnitz, the Swabia. All being focused down slowly but steadily. And the tap out, surely only seconds away. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it. Your inaugural winner of the FFA Nomad Quick, quick Match Ranked series <laughs> it's gonna be Corvinus one salami i'll leave a link in the description to where you can go watch him live over on twitch go check him out because i'm telling you he's an incredible player a good friend and an absolutely stand-up guy